Hello lovely stitchers. I hope you're all well. Um, I'm going to do a wrapped ring video today. Um, and what I use these for, these are purely for decorative pieces. Uh, if you have a look at my um, January stitch along, these are what I added in. So you can do them in all sorts of different uh, guises so that's what I will use them for um, but I'll start off by doing just a basic one something along the lines of this and then I'll move on and show you some something a little bit more fancy I'll just put them away so all you will need are some rings these are these are washers from the hardware shop, hardware shop or DIY center. Uh, also some uh, rubbery O-rings. Again, hardware center. I've also got like a box of mixed bits and bobs that I've had. Macrame stuff and hair bobbles. They they are good, but they're just stretched. So be careful with those. Little tiny. Um, rings I've seen people do them on those big bangles uh, endless sort of there's no limitations so whatever floats your boat really you can get these off the internet or in England we have Lidl and I always pick them up if they're on sale there so I will start off, let's just get that out of the way, I won't use them today. Um, I'll start off with a basic uh, ring, I'm just using a, like I say an O-ring from the plumbers, these come in packs of 50 or so, various different sizes. So you can use all kinds of thread, I've got DMC stranded cotton, um metallic yarns work well because they don't disintegrate easily uh, if you're using a variegated thread uh, make sure that your variations not too long because you end up with no variegation basically uh, co pearly cotton is great again metallic thread bit of chenille thread anything anything goes a bit of ribbon some finer pearlies but the thicker your yarn or thread the less wraps the thinner obviously it's going to take a heck of a lot more time so we'll start off with our basic um hoop so i'm going to hold on to my thread close to my ring or hoop and I'm going to go down through the centre of the hoop and wrap my thread around the back of my needle and then pull all the way through. Let's just move that out of the way. Get tangled up. It'll take a couple of wraps to sort of secure it in. So just be wary of that. So just keep going. So you're going down through the centre, yarn at the back of the needle, pull through. Obviously I've got quite a long piece of thread or yarn because I want to go the whole way round but you can finish off and restart a new piece of thread. So keep going and you keep on going all the way and around. Try and keep you, your knots, if you, if you like, I'm calling them knots, to the same. They'll want to twist over, but try and keep it all to the same sort of side, because you don't want them to twist around. So you're going through the centre, yarn around the back of your needle, pull through. And these are the simplest thing. 
think I've started with a great big hoop ring and it'll take me longer to do so I'll just keep on going and you can do one go round or they or we can go round again which I can show you in a moment well on another one these twisted threads is they start to twist back on themselves when you um, when you're stitching I know it's not exactly stitching but this is but it is this is a similar sort of stitch to a um, I would say a blanket stitch in its purest form I just keep on going and you can make these as decorative as you like and like I say you can add many many more layers if that's how you're um, where you're going with it I'll show you one with or do one with a, a second layer not on this because I don't think I'm going to have enough thread but you see what I mean with the variegated you need to make sure that it's not too it's not too far apart otherwise you won't it won't change color if that's what you're sort of aiming for when you pull in it pull it quite tight close to the last stitch because you don't want to be seeing your ring if it's um, especially if it's a black rubber one like this out the way. Tend to be um, good. These rubber, little plastic rubber. I'm, I'm going. They're actually plastic, but they look like black rubber, don't they? They um, they're good because they hold the threads they don't slip around I'm just unwind that it's like a unwind my telephone cable so when you start to get close to the end you want to try and tuck up your starting thread and hold that down hold it close to the so we can hide it so we're going to pull maybe not that one time All the, oops, come on. Again, not, not, it's not wanting to do that. It will. Right. So you just want to trap it. That's it. So you're going to cover it over. So that way you're not sewing in ends when we've finished. Make sure you actually go over it as well and don't split through your thread when you're going through. Quite a bit of thread going on. So I'm going to get to the end. And I'll show you how to um, finish it. I love these. I can spend ages doing them. Sitting, I get myself a little um, tray with all all my stuff on, all my bits and pieces on, and sit doing these on the in front of a movie or something, in front of the TV. 
So once I've got to the end, I'm just going to try and squeeze another one in, another couple in. There we go. Last one in, I think. Just try and I'm just going to try and close that little gap there because I don't like that. Come on. I don't want to go, does it? There we go. Is it? So you're going to turn your ring over and bring your thread. Just a minute, let's unwind it into go underneath your stitches you wrap quite a few really and pull all the way just make sure you when you pull in you got it got a bit of a twist in it this thread hasn't and it's just made it not to worry not to worry and then you can just snip that off okay and you see that the other ones disappeared into into nowhere so that's your first basic ring if you were going to go round again you wouldn't um, fasten off you just go in to the first stitch, okay, and then you get you into the next stitch and wrap your thread around, and you just go all the way around like that. I'm not going to do it because I don't want, but that will give you another another um, layer oops I'll get one out that's that's one that's that that's done which looks quite pretty I kind of think you can see there you go so you can keep on going with them and you can keep go 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 obviously right I'll just move that one out of the way so next one we will do we'll do a beaded We'll wrap a bead. We'll wrap it with a bead. Don't know what I'm saying. Um, let's get some of these out. So, when you're doing your sorting your beads out, I'm just going to tip a few out. Make sure your needle goes through them. That's not going to go through there, is it? That one. No, oh, why don't it want to go through that one? Right, let's find a, a finer needle. Right, you'll do. Usually about a size 12 embroidery needle, but obviously don't want to. This is really fine. Oh, are we going? And I didn't check whether that's going to go through, did I? But it will. It will, I'm sure. Let's have a look. Oh, where are you? You've disappeared. Yeah. Lovely. Okay. I'll just put the lid back on that so I don't tip the hole. Or oh, if Gertrude comes along. So... I'm going, I'm hoping you'll be able to see what I'm doing. So same principle, hold your thread, go through the centre, thread round the back. Oh, drop the needle. Oh my goodness me, I might have to hold on to this a little bit. So thread round the back. So I've done my first one. So with the next one, I'm going to go um, I'm gonna pick up a bead and thread that, pull that all the way down 
to sit on the outside of the of your ring. Can you see that? Oh, hang on. Is it wanting? Is it? Yeah. So it's going to sit on the outside of your ring. Okay. And then you're going to do exactly the same thing. You're going to go through the centre of the knee, the ring and wrap round the back of your needle. Try not to forget, try not to drop everything. Okay. Now I've got a really pretty ring for this. So it will be seen. So just bear that in mind. You will see what you're doing. Now you can go around every single one with the bead or you can do what I'm going to do and miss one. So you're just going to do another stitch and then a bead. But you need to pull your bead all the way down. This will take some time so please be patient. Okay, and go through. Happy bead, thread round the back. Ouch, stuck myself with a needle. Thread round the back. Okay. So I'm just trying to find the same colour, similar colours. Because of course I tipped out a mixed pot of beads. And I do love these mixed pots of beads. They seem to last me forever and ever. Because I go in a bead shop and I can't decide what I want. <laughs> I have no sort of thought uh, process of what I'm going to use it for. I just go in and think, oh, pretty shinies. And yeah, end up with stuff that I know I'm not going to use. So I'm better off buying a pot that has um, <clears throat> all various things. So I'm going to go all the way around. Uh, if you've got bigger beads, bigger holes, bigger thicker yarn, same thing, same difference, same, you're just going to keep on going till your ring is covered. It's a bit like um, the old fashioned needle lace type thing, the uh, tatting but without the pressure, because <laughs> that's a whole other world. <laughs> so I'm going to try and zoom in again. Hopefully you'll see me, what I'm doing. I'm trying to, so I've got one, let's focus in. One every other, but you could go. You you wouldn't. You don't have to do two stitches together like I'm doing. But I just feel like I need to. I don't know why. I just I just fancy it. So keep on going. And these do look lovely. I'm picking up my thread there. Look already, which is fine. So I'll just keep. Try not to let that show, to be honest. In fact, mm -hmm. One. I don't know whether or not you want to watch me do the whole of this. 
feels like you might get fed up so I'm just going to carry on oops and then I'll probably come back once I've done the end of that here comes Gertrude she'll want in on the action in a minute So I'm going to, right, so what I'll do is I will stop recording, I'll carry on doing this and then I'll come back to you when I've come back near the end. So I'll be back shortly. Okay, so I've gone all the way round, I'm going to do exactly the same thing to finish off so I'm going to turn my work over and I'm going to come into the back of my stitches just show you Let's go into the back but because I've got gaps oh, I want to make sure I'm pushing my thread to the back and not have it showing on the front. So I'm just going to snip that off and there we go. A pretty little beaded wrapped ring which are quite adorable. I love those. But again, they take some time, especially if you're using a thin a thin um, thread which if you're using a seed bead of course this will have to be thin. So I'm going to do another one. This time I will use a, I'm going to use a smaller um, flat ring washer. And I do like these because they've got that bigger gap. And same principle, hold your thread to the back. You're going through the middle of the washer. Wrap your thread, make sure your thread's at the back of your needle. And pull through. Thread at the back, pull through. This is all kinky, this um, thread. I don't know, I don't know why. So, this is, the thicker your thread, obviously, the easier it is, and the quicker you sort of get more bang for your buck, if you like. Oops. But as I say, if I'm doing a project and I think I want to have some of these on, I'll try and, that's why I've pulled out a few um, of the similar sort of colour. Don't know what I'm doing yet, but I know that if I got a few of the same colour, this slides to split, it's not very, I'm just going to have a look what thread this is. Uh, oh. Hmm. Oh, it's here. This is a DMC satin, Moulin satin, mm. and it's very splitty, if that's even a word. It's wanting to untwist from itself all the time. Can you see? I mean, you could use a bit of beeswax on it, but I think that would take the shine off it. So, I don't think I'd recommend that. You could even wet it. But if you're struggling with threads, there's all kinds of... Like I say, you could damp this, I think. But I've not got anything. I've got a spray, but I'm not going to do it. Because I'm. it's quick, a quick one. But if I used beeswax, this dull this. It would dull it. I don't want to. I've got a got a loopy bit there. Look. Oh, come on, come on. Where are you? Can't. Don't know. Don't want to. 
doesn't want to play ball, does it, that, at all. So, that's an alarm going off in the background. Dinner ready, which I'm just going to finish this off and I will come back. Ooh, I'm not having a great time with this thread. But I'm always drawn to shinies. Can't help myself. I'm like a magpie. So, I'm just going to finish that off. And try and. Ooh. Yeah, it's not very. Let's just trim these bits away. Same principle. You're going to. It's not very. Hang on to it. Turn it over. And thread through. <coughs> Excuse me. Frog in my throat. The back of your stitches. Pull it. Okay. That looks nice. Good okay. And just snip it off. Lovely. Oops. Have I pulled that through? I'll sort that out. Okay. So that's the next one. I'll be back shortly with the last one. Oh. So I'm back. And I thought I'd show you a little, a different technique with a crochet hook. Um, hopefully you, you'll be able to follow this quite simply. Um, so I'm using three different threads and I've just started, I'm not cutting them off. Um, I'm keeping them on the... Uh, the ball I couldn't think of the word just move my beads out there so similar sort of um, technique so I'm going to hold on to my um, hoop and thread and I'm going to come in through the hoop pull up and wrap around and pull through so I'm doing what I would call a single thread crochet now I'm right-handed so I'm going right to left so hold on to your threads that are loose because you want to cover those over so you've sewing in so you're going down through the hoop the ring yarn over your hook and pull it back through so you've got two stitches on wrap round again and pull through both of those stitches so in through the hoop wrap round up back round pull through okay I've got three three threads on because I just wanted a bit of variety so through the hoop, notice I'm hanging on to the thread, through the hoop, wrap round, pull it back through, so you've got two stitches on, yarn over your needle, your hook, pull it through, okay, so you can see that you're crocheting a, if you can crochet, this will be an absolute doddle. If not, I'm sorry, I'm not the best crochet teacher. So you're going into the hoop with your hook, wrap round, and hook it and pull it through. So you've got make two stitches. Yarn oops, over your needle. I keep calling it a needle, I mean a hook. So that you've got like another stitch and pull that through both stitches. 
Okay. Oh, try not to get your stitches too, um, your yarn too, too tight. Otherwise, now Reggie wants to go out. He's a nuisance. He's barking at the door because he wants to go down to see his daddy down the cave. Harvey's got a a man cave down the bottom of the garden. Oh, I'm, I'm tightening myself up. Just let me loosen. And I've got Gertrude here. So keep on going. Okay. Oh, I've not. That's my stomach rumbler. Do that one again because I missed. You could actually do this with a treble. I keep missing. I don't think I've got a big enough hook. Well, I know I've not got a big enough hook, but I couldn't. I couldn't be bothered to go searching for one. So they keep slipping off. But when I say searching, I just couldn't be bothered to go into the next room where I've got my hooks. So I'm. I'm just struggling on. So keep on going. Come to the end of my. Till we get right round to the end. This um, ring is a bit uh, flimsy. So it's sort of trying to curl up on itself. I'm getting all out. Oh, right, where have you come from? You could actually do this with a treble uh, crochet as well. Well, we call it a treble. You probably call it a double in America. So we'd wrap it around before you went through your hoop, wrap it around again so you've got three stitches on. But, and that'll make it a little bit uh, bigger on the outside. So, and again, when I get to the end, I'm going to, I'm going to fasten off, but there's nothing to stop you going around again. So you could go around again. So if you were going around again, you go into the top stitch, hook over. So you've got two stitches on, hook through. Oh, yarn over and pull your hook through. And you do that all the way around. I'm not going to do that. Because I'm going to finish it off. I'm just going to make my loop a little bit bigger. I'm going to snip that off, find a thread, a needle, which is here, not that one. Let's get a bigger one. Use that one. Thread my needle. I'm going to come up through the center of my loop to finish it off and then I'm going to go back flip it over and go back through some stitches as we've done before I love these sheepies um, crochet cottons they are so versatile I use them so much in my embroidery and slow stitch if you wiggle that, it'll hide that. And, <clears throat> excuse me, that's a crocheted one. Okay. I'll just show you. It. This has like a little, a little crochet edge going on, which is very sweet. Okay. So, Keep stitching and 
I will see you again at some point. Please give me the thumbs up and subscribe if you're new. And obviously, I love to read your comments and I do try and get back to you. Um, this video is a redo of a video that I did before, which seemed to have a lot of glitches in. So um, I'm sorry if you're repeating, watching, but hey ho, that's life. So happy stitching, everyone. See you all again soon. <laughs>